The Battle of Hegra Fortress was a 25-day engagement in the 1940 Norwegian campaign which saw a small force of Norwegian volunteers fighting superior German forces. After initial fighting around the Mareka Line railway line, the Norwegians pulled back into Hegra Fortress and held off further German attacks before surrendering on 5 May as one of the last Norwegian units active in southern Norway. Opposing forces Norwegian force The Norwegian defenders were 250 volunteer soldiers and the volunteer nurse Anne Margrethe Bang. Most of the volunteers that served at Hegra were from the area Hegra, Stjordal, Trondheim, but they also included three Swedes. The garrison at Hegra was equipped with small arms, as well as Madsen and Colt M29 machine guns. The fortress also had artillery four 10.5 cm and two 7.5 cm positional pieces of reasonably modern make in half turrets, as well as four Krupp M1887 8.4 cm field guns. The artillery had a maximum range of between 6 and 9 km. Many of these men had been mobilized to artillery regiment No. 3 at Poy and Mon Army Camp at Vens Air Station and were brought to Hegra to continue the mobilization after the Germans had reached their camp. The fortress at Hegra was originally only intended as a temporary refuge for the artillery regiment, but ended up as the center of the Volunteers' War in 1940. German force The attacking force initially consisted of Geberg Jager of the German 138. Geberg Jager Regiment, which landed in Trondheim on 9 April. Later, from 20 April to 27 April, the Germans substituted the 138. Geberg Jager Regiment with units from the 181 Infantry Division and the 138. Geberg Jager were sent north to try to relieve their comrades at the Narvik Front. Background the old mothballed fort at Ingstad Cleaver that was to become known as Hegra Fortress was not intended by any of the parties as a battlefield. It only became of importance when the Norwegian artillery major Hans Riedar Holtemann started organizing troops to resist the German invasion forces, which had been landed at Trondheim. Holtemann first traveled to the army camp at Vend to mobilize his artillery regiment No. 3. This mobilization began at 1400 on 9 April 1940, but the Germans landed at Stjordal Station the very next day, and by 1030 approached the camp. As his forces were not combat ready, Holtemann had to evacuate and move to what was at that point known as Ingstad Cleaver Fort to complete his mobilization. Thus, at 1500 on 10 April 1940, most of the personnel and equipment under Holtmann's command arrived at the small mountain fortification of Ingstad Cleaver Fort. At this point, Holtmann was given orders to proceed with the mobilization and otherwise do what he himself thought best. Holtmann thus began to gather and equip a fighting force of local volunteers. After arriving at the Fort Holtemann, first took residence in the buildings outside the mountain fortifications, not intending to defend the facility, only use it as a temporary base. Mobilization by 10 April, Holtemann already had 50 volunteers under his command and a steady stream of mostly local men kept being drawn to the fort. On the 11th of April, men of Holtmann's unit returned to Vens to remove more of the material and provisions stored there. Due to poor security amongst the German forces stationed at the camp, the Norwegians were able to carry out their mission undetected. The reclaimed supplies were taken partly to the fortress and partly to a number of nearby farms. When a force of 250 soldiers had been assembled, Holtemann had to turn away further volunteers due to the fact he could not arm or equip any more soldiers than those he already had under his command at that point. From 12 April work was carried out to reactivate the fortress or artillery, which was found to have plentiful ammunition, but no direction systems or charts for indirect fire. Only a few 1 to 100,000 scale maps were available at the fortress. 
The actual artillery charts for the fortress were stored in Trondheim and fell into the hands of the Germans on 9 April and were used by the Wehrmacht during the siege to deploy artillery in places that the fortress could not hit. The same day troops of Holtmann's unit were positioned around Hegra railway station and Marlen Bridge, and the first German attempt at making the fortress surrender was carried out. A German major approached the fortress together with two Norwegian officers who had given up the same day. Despite the best efforts by both the German officer and the two surrendered Norwegians, Holtemann refused to capitulate. The next day, 13 April, Major Holtemann achieved contact with his superiors at the 5th Division for the last time during the Norwegian campaign. Through a telephone conversation, the commander of the force at Hegra was told to act as he saw best and, if possible, to hinder the Germans in gaining control of the Merikarban and railway line to Sweden. In response to these orders, 20 soldiers were sent to the village of Florns to set up field fortifications and block the road and railway to Moreka. Friendly fire incident on 14 April. Reports came into the troops stationed at Hegra village stating that a train loaded with German soldiers had left Hell railway station and was on its way to Hegra. Not long after a train approached Hegra station and ignored signals to stop. In response to what was interpreted as a German troop train trying to force its way through, the soldiers guarding the station opened fire on the approaching train. In what turned out to be a tragic incident of misidentification, a civilian train carrying Finnish refugees on their way home after the end of the Winter War was fired upon with one Norwegian man killed and two. Finnish women wounded. Later that afternoon, the garrison's sole female member joined when nurse Anne Margrethe Bang from Trondheim arrived at the fortress bearing a load of medical supplies. With her, the daughter of a doctor and trained in first aid, Ms. Bang would stay in the fortress for the duration of the siege, helping two military doctors in caring for the sick and wounded. German aircraft driven off by ground fire The first shots fired by the fortress of defenders occurred on 14 April when a German aircraft flew over the fortress and was fired upon by a heavy machine gun. The aircraft sustained damage and was driven away. More equipment and ammunition was removed from Bairns and brought to the fortress the same day. Battle. German capture of the surrounding area attack on Hegra village at 5.30 on 15 April. The Germans attacked the Norwegian positions defending the Hegra railway station, Hegra road bridge and Marlen bridge, supported by artillery fire, having been partly caught by surprise. The Norwegian forces at the Hegra Road Bridge and the railway station made a fighting retreat to the fortress over a two- to three-hour period. Early on in the fighting, the Norwegians demolished the Hegra Road Bridge, forcing the German infantry to cross the precarious ice of the frozen Stjordal River under fire. At Marlen Bridge, the guards withdrew to the south. Four Norwegian soldiers fell in and around Hegra, while one was killed at Marlen Bridge. Fortress artillery intervenes as the German attack developed. The artillery pieces at Hegra Fortress opened up to support the Norwegian troops under attack in the valley below, and later covered their retreat. The Norwegian artillery fire was directed at German artillery positions. Machine gun nests and convoys of trucks pushing east towards the Swedish border. The telephone operator at Hegra Telegraph Station acted as an observer for the artillery at the fortress. Artillery fire from the fortress knocked out three German artillery pieces and inflicted casualties on the attacking force. Skirmish on the fortress road as the Norwegian infantry force pulled out of Hegra and up the road towards the fortress. The Germans pursued them until they reached a number of field fortifications blocking the road. At this position, the Norwegians held their ground and inflicted fatalities on the attacking force. Amongst the German fatalities was the attacking platoon's leader, Oberleutnant Hans Joachim Hermann. As the Norwegians were going through the area to seize German arms and equipment, they found the German Gefreiter Hugo Beiler. Beiler had been hit in both thighs, sustaining a broken femur, and was bleeding profusely. 
The Norwegian troops brought him on a ski sled to the fortress for medical care. End of the first day of the battle At the end of the first day of serious fighting, the Germans pushed on along the Merikarban and railway line and broke through the blocking position at Florns. The troops holding Florns withdrew first to Moreka, then further north to join other Norwegian forces. As night fell, German troops had occupied the areas around the villages of Hegra, Avalsgard, Florns, Ingstad and Sona. During the day, Luftwaffe aircraft had repeatedly overflown Hegra fortress. The Norwegian troops had fired on the aircraft with both rifles and machine guns, damaging one aircraft, which crashed while attempting an emergency landing at Vens. Day 2 The day after the German capture of the area surrounding the fortress, Luftwaffe aircraft repeatedly attacked with bombs and machine gun fire. German infantry probed the approaches to the fortifications but were driven off by artillery and heavy machine gun fire. A German mountain howitzer brought up to Avalsgard bombarded the fortress, destroying most of the houses outside the walls. One Norwegian soldier was killed by a shell hitting the fortress parapet. He was the last Norwegian fatality of the battle. First German charge the 17th of April began with a bombardment at 700 from the air and by the howitzer position at Avalsgard. At 900, a large force of German infantry attacked from the northeast. Supported by machine gun positions situated a mere 150 meters north of the fortress. The progress of the attack was only halted when it reached the barbed wire entanglements directly in front of the Norwegian trenches. At this point, the attacking force was subjected to heavy fire at close range from artillery, machine guns and riflemen, and thrown back. German bombers kept on hitting the fortress throughout the day, knocking out both the telephone line and the electricity supply. Neither came back into operation during the siege. From then until the end of the battle, all light inside the Norwegian tunnels and halls was provided by candles and nine kerosene lamps. Second attack is abort of the day after their first unsuccessful attack. The German forces made another attempt at storming the mountain fortress. In preparation, the fortifications were subjected to heavy machine gun and mortar fire during the early daylight hours. A battalion of infantry was brought forward towards the fortress but was hit by a blizzard while marching through no man's land. As the attacking units lost their bearing in the storm, firefights erupted between groups of Germans mistaking each other for Norwegian patrols and the whole enterprise collapsed before reaching the Norwegian positions. Bombers and heavy caliber artillery pieces kept up steady fire against the fortress throughout the day. Siege evacuation of wounded in the evening of 18 April. Two Norwegian doctors, Sigurd Arestad and Peter Berdal, approached the German commander of the Hegrasan area and requested permission to pass through the German lines to evacuate wounded soldiers from the fortress. During the previous day's fighting many German wounded had been brought to Hegra village and the doctors feared that there had been numerous casualties on the Norwegian side as well. Permission for the mission was granted, and the shelling of Hegra fortress was temporarily suspended while local volunteers made their way up to the fortress pulling ski sleds for the wounded, while our Estad led the expedition. Erdl was held hostage by the Germans to ensure that the Norwegians returned from the fortress after finishing their mission. When our Estad returned from Hegra fortress a few hours later, he brought along nine wounded Norwegian soldiers and Gefreiter Beiler, who had been released by his captors and sent along with the wounded Norwegians. As a part of the agreement, the Norwegian wounded did not become prisoners of war. Attempts to storm the fortress are abandoned from around 25 April. The Germans gave up on storming Hegra fortress. The pressing need to remove the Norwegian force ended in large part when the important town of Steinke fell to the Germans on 21 April and the Allied advance from the north was checked. 
The southern arm of the Allied counter-attack had never swung north from Andalsness and had instead been directed to the Gudbrandsdal in order to support the Norwegian forces fighting there. As the immediate crisis had passed for the German force in Trondheim, they preferred to push south to link up with forces coming up from Oslo. The focus of the Wehrmacht became to bombard Hegra fortress with artillery and air power to try to pummel it into submission. Artillery duels, aerial bombing and patrol engagements for the remainder of the battle, the Germans did not try to storm the fortress again. Fighting consisted of aerial bombing of the fortress, duels between the fortress guns and German field artillery and skirmishes between German and Norwegian ski units doing reconnaissance and bringing in supplies of food, ammunition and fuel to counter German guns placed in the positional guns blind zones. The Norwegian artillerymen positioned their two 8.4 cm field guns to cover areas the fixed guns could not reach. During the siege, the Norwegian guns targeted machine gun nests, gun positions, command posts and ammunition depots in the surrounding area. On 23 April, one of the 7.5 cm positional guns was knocked out, one of the fortress or command towers was destroyed and the waterline was broken. The second 7.5 cm gun was destroyed on 24 April. The fortress was under constant artillery fire and held out chiefly in order to be in a position to support the Allied offensive expected from the north. On 25 April, the Germans employed a new weapon against the fortress when a seaplane dropped a 1,800 kg bomb, destroying the houses outside the walls, with shrapnel ending up in Hegra village several kilometers away. From 29 April, the artillery bombardment steadily increased in strength, with German guns reinforced by captured Norwegian 12 cm howitzers from the armory in Trondheim, and the next day one of the three 10.5 cm guns at the fortress was knocked out. During the siege, a total of over 2,300 shells struck Hegra fortress. Vend Air Station One way that Haltemann wanted to directly support the main war effort in Norway was to bombard Vend Air Base, the northernmost airfield in German hands and vital for the support of German forces north of Trondheim. This was particularly so for the Narvik Front, which could not be reached by aircraft flying from further south than Vendt. Recognizing this, the Germans had hired some 2,000 Norwegian collaborationist laborers to work full-time at expanding and improving the airstrip. Bombarding Vens would both have disrupted this work and impaired the bombing raids being flown against Norwegian forces fighting further to the north. However, since Vens is 11.5 kilometers from Hegra, and the fortress of guns only had a maximum range of some 9 kilometers, this was impossible. For accurate firing, the effective range was a mere 6.9 kilometers, as that was the range of the artillery's height angle meter. Efforts were made at the fortress to increase the elevation of the guns from 19 degrees to 26 degrees by removing part of the gun shields and part of the gun mounting, but these failed as no welding equipment could be acquired to carry out the modifications. Even though no modifications could be carried out, one of the 10.5 cm guns at Hegra opened fire in the direction of ends on the 22nd of April. With the gun firing at maximum elevation, the rounds still fell hundreds of meters short of their intended target. The earliest attempt by the Hegra garrison to attack the airfield at Vend had occurred on 14 April, when a Norwegian dog sled patrol spotted massive German air activity at the airbase. Plans were made to manhandle one of the fortress 08.4 cm field guns to a nearby hill called Blank Hammeren, and from there bombard German targets out of range from the fortress itself, including the strategically important airfield. 
The plan, however, could not be carried out before the German attack of 15 April brought large German infantry forces into the area and rendered the plans infeasible. International media attention during the siege The struggle of Hegra Fortress captured the attention of the international media, with articles such as those in the Daily Telegraph on the 22nd of April and the 2nd of May, and that in the Manchester Guardian on the 16th of April. The fortress was also mentioned in articles in Time magazine on the 6th of May and the 13th of May.